Hey guys, happy Splash here. Good evening. So right now I'm going to continue with uh, this week's Dark Tower run. So I believe it's day two. It's been a little bit, but yeah, we'll hop right into it. And so yeah, let's uh, let's go. Nice, it's back. All right, so looks like it is going to continue for the week, it seems. So we are going to be facing a Geisha with a Glee pet skin. Okay, looking at a Flammy Heli right now with the little crystals here for protection. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other buildings we got on here. Got the Caesar's head, and I do want to protect this at all costs because of the mental shields. So I'm going to probably take a little bit of damage and just look to build up our board while we uh, clear out some more heroes. So let's just see what else we got going on. So we got the Toothy Thuggy going on over here. I okay, got a little bit of spikes as well. Gonna go with the hero with uh, the high stats and a little bit of flight over here. Probably go for next turn, especially since we have our legendaries. We will look to get rid of the board. So we have the prince over here. Got some squires coming out after killing some of our buildings. Also have some summons behind as well. Gonna go with the arch vampire to at least start setting up for a board wipe and then also going to let's see if we got that 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 i guess since we're playing against arch vampire and the kill on wounded skill probably do want to protect our heroes a little bit more so normally i would go with the curse but i think instead probably could go let's see there there yeah i'm gonna go with actually a little bit more protection with the apollo over here on d2 so we'll have Arch Vampire hitting all the enemies at the end of the turn. And we got a little bit of protection over here. Oh, not not uh, the rare Aphrodite. That would, would be the one to protect. But this is fine. Uh, I'm going to go with the Destruction Skill to get rid of these heroes. Also get rid of some of the Crystals for the Flammy Heli. Uh, let's see. So we can't crack that. Could break that. Get rid of this here. That. Yeah, we have another hero, so why not? I'm going to go with this uh, Ogre Plant over here on B2. We'll summon another plant. Deal some more damage. Also, well, uh, looks like we're getting invasion on some of our heroes at the end of the turn, which is very nice. Whoa! Okay, we got the Mizu over here with the Water Elemental at the end of the turn. Uh, also freezing up some of our spots here with these Freeze Runes. Do you want to find a way to clear this out? I'm uh, probably going to have to wait one more turn to do so. So I'm going to go with the Grace over here on B1. It is frozen, but we'll be able to do some random damage, which we will need for later in order to clear out the Mizu. Okay, we got the Free Folk Leader giving miss to one of our heroes at the end of the turn. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with this Bone Dragon over here on A3. It gives Reborn to one of our Chaos Heroes, which in this case is the Arch Vampire. And also a little bit of flight, so some protection on lane A. And, well, I guess we had lethal already. <laughs> nice. Alright, so let's see what we have for rewards. Okay, it's got some runes because we're still in the world of it. And then also got some epic flaws. Not bad. It looks like we have legendaries for rewards this time. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Might actually need them for the next quest as I think about it, but... If we, if we lose this one, that's fine. If we win this one, that's fine, too. Um, so, let's see. You really want to play around these spikes buildings because they are going to trigger off that wounded skill. So, in this case, I'm going to go with this range hero over here on C1. This Dark Huntress will give block to one of our heroes. And in this case, we'll also trigger out some extra damage. All right, so we've got the High Nog over here. Does some poison in the line. Let's see if we have enough on the, let's put the 93... There is an attack rune over here on B2, and that actually should be enough for us to destroy this hero because of the Orc Master's extra attack. Okay, we got just a regular Naga over here. Uh, and I'm going to continue. Let's see if we can do that. I'll be destroyed. I'm going to go with this Medusa, Lady Medusa on C2. This has some freeze on the heroes that appear in the line. Also, it does combo with the Chaos skill of the orc master so because of that the death trigger this now has extra attack we have this griffius over here dealing some random damage to some of our heroes uh it's probably going to be strong enough where we do want to get rid of it so i'm going to go with the arch vampire just to set up and then also going to follow with some protection with the uh, medusa here so let's see what's going to make the most sense high stats i think this is probably going to be slightly better so we got the champion of arena get some block and then we'll also get some extra Damage by an extra attack if it does kill something. Okay, the Griffius has hit two for two, which is not what we were looking for. 
We have the Dead Bowman over here. Does a little bit of an attack boost and vampirism. Our Lady Medusa did have its death trigger go off with the freeze runes. Uh, gonna go with the destruction kill to get really Griffius and then follow up with this Count Vlad over here on B3. Just to clear out the heroes. Also, we'll have some damage at the beginning of the next turn, which is nice. Okay, now we're quite what we're looking for. So we got the Diana over here, gets a health boost for every one of our heroes. Also, we'll have counterattack. So we don't want to hit with the melee hero because at this point, see with the attack, we'll be able to destroy that. Uh, let's see. Chaos Hero Frozen. Yeah, I suppose. We can also just deal some damage over to the Diana as well. Okay, so we got the Demon the Ripper here, setting the health of two of our heroes to one if it dies. Uh, I'm going to go with our Call of the Witches, even though it's, we're far away from lethal. I do want to be able to draw off the Demon Ripper skill off of these witches that will die at the beginning of the next turn. Then also we'll be able to destroy the Diana, which is also very nice. Uh, I'm going to go next with this melee hero over here on D3, just on high health. But we did draw away the skill, which is very nice. We didn't, we didn't want our Count Vlad to be destroyed. Okay, they went with their own Arch Vampire. Yeah. And we got this Igneous Girl getting splashed to the Chaos enemies. Uh, fortunately, the Count Vlad does have a Vampirism skill as well, and it does heal himself, so even if the Destruction skill goes off, we'll still have one hero alive. Uh, I'm gonna go with, let's see... I'm gonna go with the Grace over here on B1, just behind the Vlad, which is at full health. Also, we'll have the Random Dash, clear out some other heroes, and then get an attack boost over to our other heroes. It actually looks like we have three different vampires on the board. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, let's see. So we got that over there. I'm gonna go with this melee hero over here with the higher attack on C3. Uh, got the leader Nilin that does deal some poison damage to our heroes when they come on to play. All right, we drew out the destruction skill. So we call the witch next. And... We got the room worn over here. When it's attacked, we'll summon an attack room. Uh, I think we're actually going to have enough for lethal now. So I'm just going to summon this range here over here on the two to clear it out. Grace looks like it has seven extra attacks now. And... Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that was a ghost right there. Okay, so let's see what we have for rewards. Ooh, got some Vixen. Not bad. I'm going to actually go back out of the map for now and see if we might need these for later. So I do know that there is a quest down here that needs 1600. Mm, well, it's possible. Eh, who knows? We'll just do it this way and, and uh, be fine with it. So we'll keep going because that's what we're here to do. So yeah, let's, uh, yeah, we'll just, let's keep going. Okay, so we are starting first this time. Uh, let's see. Another building here that gives spikes. Probably do want to clear that out. Um, have a little bit of a floater over here with the Imago, but probably going to be better with the range hero instead. So I'm just going to clear out the spikes building. And this range hero over here, this Insidious Gorgon on A1, gives us a little bit of an attack and health boost to our Chaos heroes. And uh, already first turn, they went for the Arch Vampire. Very surprising. Uh, let's see, we got damage over there, damage there. Okay, this might be a quicker battle. Uh, I'm gonna go with this melee hero over here on the three, just to clear out the building. Also get some health back with our melee kill. Got another tough one over here. Uh, let's see, so we got the Woodland Hermit. This one gets an attack boost off of a silence being played. I kind of do want to summon this Jolnir just because of the potential extra damage to other heroes. And it might actually protect us as well, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go with the, uh, what do you call? I'm going to go with the Arch Vampire. Set up for board wipe and then also potentially protect our own heroes as well. Yeah. Might not quite what we're, quite what we're looking for. We've got another Diana out of play. Uh, well, we'll have to summon another range hero this time. And this time, this is going to be a Lady Snow. This one has order, so at least it won't take the damage from the Jolnir. Yeah! Okay, 
Uh, we had a luck idol summon a leaf child, which was destroyed by the jewel near. Uh, I don't have anything to destroy this. Go to there, there. So unfortunately, we don't have any more order heroes because then we are now going to deal damage to our own heroes. So couldn't go for the destruction skill. Could do the damage on that, but probably just better if we just clear out the Diana and then worry about other heroes for later. So we'll take a little bit of damage off our heroes. We got the Vixen over here that can freeze two of the enemies because we attacked the Warlord. And we drew out the destruction skill. And now we're facing a Mina Helsing with some extra damage to our Warlord. Uh, let's see here. Checking out if we have anything of Pierce or... Oh, we, I mean, we have a little bit of Floater, so I guess it's okay. So we're just going to go with the Imago over here on A3 just to block. When it dies, it summons some moths, which will allow us to deal a little bit of extra damage. See, when it dies, it deals damage to the easy one. Uh, okay, we got the Angler Vol over here and a little bit of attack boost, also some extra Pierce. Gonna go with this Angry Imp over here on A3. Should try and deal some damage over to these heroes so we can actually do a destruction spell. So, it's not looking too good right now. Alright, so let's see. Because of that. <laughs> That Arch Vampire really has been doing work. Uh, got the Dark Acolyte over here. Has a Death Trigger to deal damage to our Warlord. Nothing really here is going to help us out that much, especially since we are low in health. So I'm going to go with the Shuffle, see what we can find. Uh, not quite what we're looking for. going to do one more Shuffle, see what we can find. And also nothing we're looking for. Uh, I'm going to go with the Destruction Skill, just to clear out some heroes. And then I guess we'll go with the Call of the Witch. We'll take some extra damage. Really did want something to actually destroy these other heroes, but doesn't look like we're gonna have that. Combat over there, combat there. Yeah, we are gonna most likely take lethal this next turn. So we got some health back off of a melee kill. But then we have the open lane D, and we still have the Mina on the field, so unfortunately we will be taking the lethal uh, well, this turn because also the extra attack. <laughs> all right, all right, well, I mean. That does happen. <laughs> that is okay. All right, yeah, let's uh, well, let's keep going. That arch vampire first turn. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, so we have a building here that deals some damage. They got some buildings that give health, health boost around. I'm gonna go with this building over here on D two. This void rock gives extra attack to one of our heroes. We'll also deal some extra damage if spikes does happen. Right, they got a Caesar's head, which you will want to clear out because of the extra damage and the metal shields that they give. Uh, so I guess we'll this man go over here on three. Deal some damage when it comes into play. Also has some extra attack at the end for stuff. And then also reflect some damage. Okay, uh, let's see. So this Caesar's head is really big, so I'm going to actually get rid of it now. Uh, also we can avoid some extra damage for later. Then also got rid of the rare ghost, triggering off the freeze skill. Uh, let's see. That I'm gonna go with the hoodoo over here on. Yeah, actually gonna go with the hoodoo over here on C1. Really do want the uh, totem. We we did have the option with the vanquory, but I do want also the attacker as well. well. And as you can see, that mad totem doing that heal skill. Right, another arch vampire again we got the frost over here saying the health of one of our heroes to one and when another order hero comes out you want to clear this out as well so i'm gonna go with this wudan over here on a1 summoning the mushu help us deal some damage also get another blocker on the board okay some more damage again do we have anything to destroy that we could get some there yeah, we're going to get rid of the Arch Vampire now, actually. Uh, could potentially get rid of it there. Seeing if I have enough. So the 162, 775. Yeah, we're just going to get rid of the Arch Vampire now. So there's something to kind of Vlad over here on a uh, E3. And then since we did heal, we did actually get an attack boost on the totem here. Okay, so that's not good. So they got the Yostra over here getting a health boost to their heroes for every female. Do you want to clear out this Yoster, but I can see the health is very strong now. Uh, let's see. Guess we can go with that is damage over there. It also doesn't help this planting has spikes because it will actually destroy the Flammy Holly. 
Uh, I mean, we do have these slimy heli crystals, which can protect. That's really it. <laughs> and so, see that Yoster dealing a lot of damage. Also, the hoodoo is silent, so no more wood spikes in front of those. I'm gonna go with the call of the witches, because we need some attackers against this angler vole as well. And at this point, let's see, we can break that, break that, that, that. I guess best case scenario, we can go with this. Let's see, how much damage are we gonna be taking? So 43 for every enemy. In that case, is a lot. Um, eh, could be. I'm gonna go with this melee here over here, this sensational beast on A3. Just deal some extra vampirism damage. But as you see, we're taking a lot of damage off to our heroes, and we have no way to clear this out. Still haven't used their destruction skill either. So, very bad shape. All right, uh, let's see. They got the Butcher setting the health of one of our heroes to one. We only have this Void Jewel, or Void Rock now. I'm gonna do a shuffle, see if we can find anything. Uh, in this case, nothing. We'll do one more shuffle, see if we can find something. And also nothing. Great. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that'll probably be it for this battle. And especially when we're taking 215 damage uh, every turn on our board. Well, GG. <laughs> oh, whoops. Okay, well, we have one more battle. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do. I haven't been getting too many strong legendary heroes. It's kind of unfortunate. All right, this is fine. Let's see. We have that there. I'm gonna go with this melee here over here on D3. This wing protector has mental shield and flight. What was that? Could have actually gone with the beholder as well, but I think that's probably gonna be a little slow. And I do want to start protecting some of our resources rather than deal more damage. So we got the ice big here. This one will freeze any. Was it freezes any hero in the line of nature? Hmm. Okay. Uh, in that case, probably just going to go with another flight hero. Yeah, I guess I'm this one on B3. This one, this Dream Whelping has some flight and some splash. Woo! Okay, we got some good options now. So we have the Friendly Spirit over here. As a Death Trigger, just freeze one of our heroes. going to go with the Strick over here on B1. We'll also deal some extra damage. Clear these out. And as you can see, the Death Trigger froze the Strick. Yeah. Okay, we got the Torlis over here, has flight, also gets an attack boost for nature, ally, and dying. Uh, I'm gonna go with this melee hero next on uh, C3. So this Demon the Ripper will be able to set the health of two of the heroes to one when it dies. And that'll actually combo with the Strick, so we can deal some extra damage. Hmm. This hero gets blocked to melee allies and that. Could be enough, actually. So we're going to go with the Calm Monkey King over here on A3. Also can have some reflect damage as well. And I guess we had enough splash damage uh, given from the Shrick, actually. That's pretty nice to clear out the Lord of the Undead. Uh, so we have the Shaolin over here. This one has a death trigger to deal damage to one of our heroes. Um, could deal damage over there. Let's see how we're gonna be doing. So, could use the destruction skill, but instead, I'm just gonna go with the evil's helper over here on D3. It did actually transform the Shaolin, so we get a run around the death trigger and then a little bit more damage to destroy the Torlus. <laughs> right, so, we have the Amago attacking the Kong Monkey King, but has that reflect -like damage and then triggered off the Amago death trigger for these heroes. All, right, all of these will have damage to a wounded hero in our line. So in that case, let's see if we got combat there, there, there. I'm thinking if we have any other ways to perhaps heal or take advantage of that. But in this case, just gonna summon another range hero to protect the strike. And well, we'll just try and deal as much damage as we can now. So we got the Arch Vampire. We have the Destruction Skill, which as you can see, set the health of these heroes to one. <laughs> Call the witch. I guess they're trying to. Well, they're very far away from lethal, so I guess they could try and set the board. Okay, they got this dark tree, giving attack boost to their chaos heroes, and then also deal some damage to our heroes at the end. Uh, let's see. 
You know, I do want to end up healing again, so I'm going to go with our own Arch Vampire and then follow up next with this, um, what do you call? I'm going to just follow up next with Mary Cory over here on the uh, C2. I okay, didn't see that healing every time one of our heroes are destroyed. I'm going to do the destruction skill now just to clear these heroes out. I'm going to go next with the Call of the Witch uh, against the Balts over here. And not quite enough to destroy. Uh, could potentially do, still do it. But I'm going to go with this uh, Void Juggler over here on B2. Get some extra attack. And it's actually enough to destroy the Balts. And we are very close to lethal. Uh, and as you see with our Call of the Witches being destroyed, our heroes are healed. We got the Cursed Oak over here giving some negative attack to our heroes, but with the open lane on A, there we go. I can't read Korean text, unfortunately. <laughs> but the victory was there. So let's see what we have for rewards. Ooh, got some Maharn. Not, not bad. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so we're going first this time. Uh, let's see. You do want to protect this building that does deal damage to one of the heroes. Got this Lord of the Forest that does some silence when it dies, so not too bad. Going to place that behind the building over here. And B2. Don't want to use this attack room yet, as we are going to use it for more damage. So we got the Winged Knight over here. Has some flight. Also has attack boost when it is attacked. Hmm... I'm gonna go with this melee hero over here on D3, this nomad giving the miss to one of the, the heroes. Okay, got the, got the aqua spirit over here, got freezing some of our ranged heroes. Uh, I don't wonder what's gonna make more sense. Let's see. Steals from attack, wounded, evasion. Oh, we could have a lot of protection, actually, with our Amaterasu. I think I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to place it over... Actually, going to place it over here on A2. And the reason why is because I want to leave these melee spots open so that if the Arch Vampire does come out there, we will have a lot of protection. Um, so, yep. Yeah, well, So we got the Grandma over here. has some flight, so that's blocking our Eternal Sun. going to go with the Arch Vampire, which doesn't land where we want. Uh, but I'm going to go with the, ooh, let's see. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with the melee hero with the high health here. So we'll miss actually on both uh, both spots, but we'll have the Arch Vampire deal some damage at the end of the turn. Okay, Angler Vol coming out here with a little bit of attack boost. Uh, Probably a little too much just to destroy. I guess we could clear out these heroes. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll go with the uh, destruction. Steal some more damage, clear out the grandma. And then also gonna go with the Aphrodite over... I'm actually gonna go with the Aphrodite over here on the one. Getting some damage at the end of the turn. Also getting some metal shield again. And at this point, I'm just gonna try and preserve our setup with the Amaterasu. All right, so we got the prince over here, got some squires coming out off of our hero desk. Also has, what was also that? Oh, some uh, archers as well. Okay, uh, let's see. So we got that, that, that. There. We could give curse to a random enemy. Uh, but I'm just going to go with this melee hero over here on D3. This bone dragon, just to clear up the angler hole. Uh, and at this point, we're just, we have both ways to deal damage, either by combat or with the, uh, what do you call, the Aphrodite damage. Alright, so we got this Engineer healing some of the enemies at the end of the turn. Gonna go with the Call of the Witches, <laughs> since more attackers are on the board. And then, let's see, I'm gonna summon another Flight or Hero over here on C3, just to block against the Prince. some more damage at the end of the turn. If we can summon heroes with higher health, that would be good because there is a better chance we can deal potentially lethal. All right, so we went with the Arch Vampire. Broke all of our metal shield. We also have some poison on our heroes, apparently. All right, we got the Immortal Warrior giving an attack boost to the order heroes, which in this case are those squires. Uh, let's see. So we have that, 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 that. Okay, I'm going to go the Grace over here on C1, just to deal damage over to the Prince. 
Also allowing for our heroes to deal damage first before the random damage comes out later. Guess we could have protected the grace, but this is this is fine too. Really want to just clear out their heroes because we do have enough health in order to take damage. Yeah. Okay, looks like they got some health back off of melee kill. We got the snake here, the invulnerability. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go with this range hero over here on C2. This might actually be enough for lethal now. We have a combat, we have seven extra attacks apparently. And, well, there you go. And if not, the, the Aphrodite would have dealt the rest of the damage after the first grace attack. Legendary. Alright, got some Omnirock. Not bad. Okay, well, let's keep going. Hey, it's Nocturnus. I wonder what they're like with uh, the Arch Vampire. Whoa. Or the, sorry, the Geisha. Alright, so we got the Cursed Shaman over here. Got that totem in front of themselves. That totem has a little bit of spikes. Uh, let's take a look at that building over there. Uh, let's see. This one here gives an attack around. This one has Vamp Prism. I'm gonna go with this melee hero actually over here on C3 with the Metal Shield. Just gives a little bit of block, just not not too bad. All right, so we got this celestial maiden here with the flight and the metal shield. We go with the ooh, splash over there. I like having this here with a little bit of splash. Yeah. Dealing some damage over to that totem, and then also the building also has a death trigger. As well. Okay, we got the Suku Mogami here with the evasion. Also gets a health boost. Uh, let's see, so we got that, that, that. No, I do actually like the poison damage off of the Melia, so I'm gonna use that instead. So, Melia over here on D1 does some poison damage to heroes at the end of the turn. Also deals some extra damage to the Warlord. Okay, we got the Lucky Rabbit over here, freezing two of our heroes. We'll still be able to deal poison damage because this, is, this isn't off the attack. Uh, I'm gonna go with this men uh, Metal Shield hero over here on A3 the lady player a little bit of attack boost then again using our poison to deal some more damage okay drew out the arch vampire all right we got the dead lord over here with their zombie okay, we got some damage on over there uh so let's see so probably a majority of our board is going to be destroyed uh let's see we got comet over there comet there I want to do this in such a way that I'm able to actually have all of our board survive. It's very unlikely. Let's see, we got combat there, this there. Nope, I'm going to go with the Arch Vampire and then actually follow up with the Yorick over... Hmm. Actually, you know, no, I'm actually going to go with this Torless over here on A1. Get some health back because we are running a little bit low. And then we just need to wound these heroes enough. Yeah. As you can see, we're getting some health back now. We got the Argus over here, which will heal their Warlord when poison does trigger. Uh, let's see. Probably strong enough in order to clear this out, so we'll go with the Destruction skill. Also getting rid of the Sukumu Gong. And then I'm gonna go with the uh, melee hero over here on D3. Ice Claw has some decent stats, but more importantly, it has the free skill, which we may need for later. So there's the destruction skill, clearing out our melee and our archer part. Looks like they went with a piece of ice to freeze our own Torless over here. Um, so they still do have the Call of the Witches available. I'm not really too concerned about the damage for it. And this hero is actually going to die next turn anyway, so really don't need to go for that. I'm going to protect our Torless over here with the Dark Tree. Deal some damage. And then again, let our Ice Clod freeze another hero. Okay, we got the Dandy Croc over here. Has some attack steel and some spikes. Um, yeah, combat over there, there. I still want to actually be able to deal melee damage, so that'll be 
kind of nice. So I'm going to go with this melee hero actually over here on C3. The Prince Nod will be able to deal some damage over to Danny Croc. And then the Ice Cloud again, freeze him with Danny Croc. Okay, let's see. So combat will destroy that. Actually, combat plus the tree will destroy that. I'm just going to go with another melee hero with high health. So in this case, the Bamboo Master getting a little bit of spikes as well. And we have our melee damage from the Prince Nod and in case of health back. And we've got the Void Stone over here dealing some damage to our heroes when they come on play, which in this case will actually stop the Call of the Witch, oddly enough. Uh, so, you know, I'm just going to go with, let's see. Probably just want to go with more attackers than anything else. So this building may end up being a problem, so I'm just going to go with this melee hero over here on, uh, what do you call A3. And we also take some damage as well. So you have to call the witch, which is okay. Okay, got the high tinker over here with the mini Tesla X. Okay, and we're going to be taking some damage at the beginning of the, uh, beginning, well, attack boost over to the heroes and then any hero death resulting in a boost. Uh, oh, we're also taking extra damage to our nature heroes, which in this case are those. So that's not what we want to see. Uh, I'm going to go with the Call the Witch to see if we can deal enough damage over these heroes. Looks like we do have our Call the Witch is actually still alive because of our Gleedy Pet boost. And, well, let's see. So we come there, come there. I'm going to go with the Lady Medusa over here on, um, call, on D1. Just to clear up the Tinker. Not really so concerned about the mini Tesla X anymore, just because we have enough attackers on the board. All right, so we got the Kunai Master dealing some damage over to our range heroes. This will be destroyed in combat. Gonna protect the Lady Medusa over here with this Wing Protector on D3. Uh, and at this point now, they have to deal with both the pumped up Torlis because of our nature heroes being destroyed, and then also the Lady Medusa here. Okay, so we got the Kabas over here, got some block on itself, also has reflect damage, and we'll get block over to the Warlord. I'm gonna go with, actually with the Tesla X over here on D2. We're gonna deal some damage whenever one of our heroes are destroyed. So this way we can actually get around the block given to the Warlord. Normally I want to summon the Grace just for combat, but in this case now we just want to deal, um, not combat damage, but uh, effect damage over. So let's see. So we got the Void Rock over here, giving extra attack to one of the enemies, which in this case yeah, is the Kamas over here. Gonna go with the Void Juggler over here on the, what do you call on C1. And at this point now, we have them on a three turn clock, uh, three hero clock rather. Uh, let's see here. Gets to this point, we're just. Let's see, how much block is that on them? So 117. So actually, that wouldn't be enough for lethal once we do these sudden death. Okay, we got the novice over here, but no death triggers. I go over here. Actually, just go for lethal uh, by uh, destroying an order hero. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. All right, so let's see what we have for wards this time. That's a mantis, which is not useful. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going. Okay, so we are starting first this time. Let's see what we can do. All right, we got a building over here that deals damage at the end of the turn, so we do want to clear that out. We're gonna go with this range hero over here on B1. So this Lady Snow will be able to freeze some chaos enemies, which is not bad. Got the Cursed Oak over here giving negative attack to our heroes. Just gonna summon another range hero yeah. and just to deal some damage over to this building. Which also deals damage to us in the long term. Here we got the Furious Sabretooth over here and dealing some adjacent damage. Uh, let's see, we got that, that, that. Yep, we have this Count Vlad. Let's go run over the, the Sabretooth. Also allows us to set up for a destruction skill with the Beeping of Children. Which currently right now is not happening. We have the All Prince of Sands giving mist to two of our heroes. But in this case, is that also kind of flat as well? Uh, no. Yeah, I'm just going to go with this range here over here in A1. 
This embalmed priest can do some poison damage when it dies. Okay, we got the lucky rabbit freezing two of our heroes. Also has a little bit of pierce. Uh, let's see, so we got that. Let's see, this will also get me missed as well. Kind of a tough spot because once we destroy the All Prince of Sands, we give negative attack to our heroes, which we don't need. Suppose we can actually just go with this axe over here on E3. Well, I guess that was it. <laughs> Ooh, we got the Arthur Frostblade over here. Got some freeze, and then also got the Kaladin Bowl, which will allow an attack boost as well. Uh, we can give Axe extra attack if we summon another Chaos Hero, but I still need to play around the Arch Vampire skill as well. Uh, let's see. No, oh, gonna go with the Ice Claw down here on D3. Potentially freezing the Arthur, which we do not do. Okay, we have some more Frozen Heroes. We got the Warden of the North with some attack steal skills. Then also it does its attack steal as well. Uh, let's see. I'm still not too concerned about this. I'm just gonna go with another Chaos Hero actually over... Here on uh, oh. E1. Just spreading out our damage for now. Okay, looks like we froze the Arthur, which is good. Okay, we got the crafter over here, healing allies in the line at the end of the turn. Uh, let's see, we got that over there. Ooh, you know what? If we have attack steal, will that work? Calibol will get an attack boost at the beginning. Not quite. Alright, so you know I'm actually going to go with this melee hero over here on C3. This Deep Maw, well actually is another Chaos Hero, which gives more attacks to X. And also give Toxin over to the enemies. Right, so we got the Arch Vampire, frozen again by the Lady Snow, which is good. Okay, we got this Alexandria here at the end of the turn, which will remove the negative effects. Uh, let's see... So the problem is we cannot wound the Alexandria and that life palace is going to heal their allies as well. So that actually effectively gets rid of our own destruction skill. Uh, let's see. I guess we can summon another chaos hero. See if we can run over the arch vampire. And in this case as well, I'm going to go with this melee hero over here on C2. This old god servant can deal damage to a wounded hero. Or a wounded enemy rather. All right, so they did their destruction. Got rid of the water aboard. Okay, we got the Call of the Witch over here. So we got some major damage happening next. Okay, and then we have an attack boost over to Lady Claire because of the adjacent enemies. Alright, well, we're running low on health, so I guess we'll go with our Arch Vampire, do our destruction skill. And then. I guess we'll go with our own Call of the Witch. Maybe we can clear out the Alexandria, which we will be able to do that. The Calibol over here is getting. Uh, Gotten a large health boost from the Arthur. Uh, do need something to actually break this metal shield so we can attack. Uh, I'm gonna go with this melee hero. Let's see. Yeah, this melee hero is not bad. So this one can actually freeze and attack the enemy, just in case we need it. Okay. Uh, we got the Warden of the North again. Attack boost. Very large stats as well. Uh, let's see. How is he getting attack boost? Oh, because of the Calibol. Yeah, okay. So we need to find a way to get rid of those. Okay, so in this case, going to go with the Triton over here on C3, just to block. This Death Whelping here has Reborn in Flight, but any of these heroes that end up attacking it will get silenced. Yeah. So you'll see number one, number two, and the attack steal over there. We got the Dragar over here with the attack boost. And so, let's see. Nothing too much here. Could do a shovel to see if we can have any type of blockers against it. Mm, we have this ice clod, which I guess could be okay. <laughs> but we don't end up freezing the Drugar, so that's not what we want to see. Yeah. Why don't we have some... we can stall around for a little bit. So the Triton also does have some health boost over to our Warlord at the end of the turn. Uh, let's see... No, I'm going to go with the York over here on D2 against the Winged Knight here. Does have a Death Trigger, and we'll be able to actually get some damage back again. 
which is enough to clear the Trigar. Alright, we got the Koshi over here, giving negative attack to our heroes, also getting a health boost. Uh, let's see. We're at three health. <laughs> and at this point, they should also be able to do sudden death, so... I'm gonna do one more shuffle, see if we can find something that will help us out. Uh, we do have a flight here, which is okay. Yeah! And we got some health back, so we actually get around the sudden death. Okay, so we got the Shadow Manipulator over here, summons a puppet whenever we summon an order hero, so we want to avoid that. Uh, let's see, come destroy that. We want to be able to get some melee kills if possible. Uh, ooh, we can set the attack of a hero on the enemy side to one. Okay, we'll clear out the Shadow Manipulator. Okay, we do have our flight hero getting away the Koshi, which is nice. Right, we got another Celestial Maiden with the Flight and the Mental Shield. No more shuffles this time, and we have actually all melee heroes, which isn't really that helpful. Uh, let's see. Get that, get that, get that. We could give counterattack to our melee heroes. You know, there is a chance that we could potentially transform this if we have this flight hero destroyed, so... Um, I don't want to take up our spots because we might need to summon over there. That those deal with those. We deal 104. That would actually destroy our flight hero, which we don't want. This hero does gives metal shield. Run your hero appears. Counter attack. Yep. Um. You know, I'm just gonna actually go with another trine over here on uh, A2. We can get some health back, and then also if our flight hero ends up being destroyed, we'll at least have the ability to silence the Koshi. <laughs> Oh, so much for that. <laughs> Alright, so we got the Dominus over here, got the adjacent damage, also the extra attack. Uh, no flight heroes this time, and we can't get rid of that, so let's see. Yeah, we are going to be taking lethal most likely next turn. Gonna save this range hero over here on B1 though. This one does have a silent skill, so maybe we'll be able to stop the rest of the damage. Yeah. Nope, never mind. <laughs> the epic version of the Dragar out here for lethal. Alright, well, I mean, it's still not too bad. I mean, that was pretty good day two, I suppose. I have two more victories to get, and we have four more days. So yeah, we will, uh, well, hopefully we'll get it done tomorrow. Or whenever the attempts come back. So yeah, we'll see you guys then. This is Happy Slasher, signing off.